Be careful, don't go out. In Judeo-Christian uh, uh, and Western ideology, the werewolf, you know, the scary monster comes out on a full moon. And for us as Muslims, we ensure our safety with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with our siyam and with our ibadah. There's also the qadr that descends in certain months of the year. One of the authentic hadith, this is a sahih hadith. Uh, and there's few hadith that are sahih about the month of Sha'ban. May Allah allow us to receive it in a, in a little while. Is about the beauty of the middle of Sha'ban. Our qadr also descends in the middle of Sha'ban. It also descends in Laylatul Qadr. So these are notable days and notable moments where we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in devotion and in worship. So qadr is knowledge. The first level of the qadr is al-ilm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi kulli shay'in alima, ahata bi kulli shay'in ilma. His knowledge is not observatory. Allah does not need to see what happens for him to know it happens. Allah's knowledge predates the occurrence. Now this became a little bit problematic for some of the philosophers, even amongst Muslim societies. They said if Allah knows what happens, and He knows a person will enter Jahannam, it's not fair. Allah knows this man is going to enter Jahannam, and this man will enter Jannah even before they have lived their life, and the answer is yes. Even before they have lived their life. How? How is this fair? Because none of us know the knowledge of Allah. So you don't know what you are about to do. Allah knows what you will do. But you don't know what you will do until you do it. So the Sahaba, they asked the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, in kan al-amr unf, if everything is decided, falima na'mal, why should we do anything? Why don't I just sit down and wait for qadarillah? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullun, look at the beauty of the statement. Kullun muyassarun ila amal. You will only do what is written. Because Allah knows what you will do. So if you sit down, that's what's written for you. Allah knows you're just going to sit down. If you stand up, it's your choice. It's your choice to stand up. Allah knows you will stand up. If you sit down, you're the one sitting down. But Allah knows you will sit down. That's your amal. Allah knows that amal. For many of your professors or many of your tutors more precisely, they give out assignments. They see your assignments. You give them in, they take them in. Most, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator by profession. In my class, I know those who will be A students and those who will be, there's no show, don't want to depress anyone, those who will not pass, don't want to see F students. And I, wala, and we don't make wala nadribu lillahi al But I know by the progress of a student, who's going to pass, who's going to fail. I still don't say to a student, it's okay, don't take my class, go. Don't even try. No. It's not possible. You allow people to go, and you allow people to proceed. You might see your young daughter or son about to climb a tree, you know they will fall. But you let them fall because they will learn from it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Al-Ali Al-Azim, his knowledge is not observing that, his knowledge predates it. So people in the day of judgment will say, Rabbana irji'na na'mal salihan. Oh Allah, allow us to go back to the dunya. Na'mal salihan, fima farakni, in the things we left. Allah says, kalla, no. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. It is a word they say. They would do the same thing. If I returned you to this life again, after you saw the Day of Judgment, after you saw Al-Jannah, after you saw Al-Nar, you will do the same things again. And there's proof of this in our life. How many human beings make a mistake, they know it's wrong, they do it again. They say, Tubtu ilallah, khalas, tubtu ilallah. And then, they go back and do it again. Why? Ibn Adam, insan, yansa, forget his place with Allah. Look at the qadr of Adam, alayhi salam. Hajj Adam wa Musa. Adam and Musa fought. They had an argument with one another. The Prophet sallam tells us in Sahih al-Bukhari. Musa said to Adam, You were in Jannah. Akhrajtana minha. You made us get kicked out. Because you ate from it, couldn't you control yourself? Allah, كُلُوا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا 
eat from the trees of Jannah as much as you wish. وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَ But don't touch this one. Why did you eat it? Musa asks. Adam says, do you blame me for something قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Do you blame me for something written for me to do? What does that mean? Adam here is saying, Allah knew by creating me that I am capable of forgetting my place with Him. It was written for me as a human being, you and I, to make mistakes and fall, fall in those mistakes. Allah, before creating Adam, knew that we will be on this earth. Knows that Adam will make that mistake. Even the angels knew. The angels, they say, أَتَجْعَلُ fiha, Ya Allah, you will place in it those يَفْسِدُ fiha who will corrupt the earth وَيَسْفِكُ dima and bring death to each other. Allah had informed them of what was to happen. They are outside time. They can see time. And the Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, لا تسب الدهر Don't ever curse time. Because Allah is beyond time. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ وَالدَّهْرِ Right? It's a beautiful statement of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah عليم يعلم أحاط بكل شيء علم Knows everything before it happens. And knows what would happen even though it will never happen. Such as the final example in the story of Al-Khidr. And Musa, a young child is killed by Al-Khidr. And Musa says, how could you kill this young boy, this young adolescent? He hasn't done anything that we've seen or heard wrong. Later on in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah informs Musa, Al-Khidr informs him, كَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنَ His parents were two believers. فَخَشِينَ We feared, Allah and me feared, that if he lived, يُرْهِقَهُمَا He will lead them to disbelief in Allah. So Allah loved them enough to take from them their child. Because if he lived, he would lead them to disbelief. Allah knows what happens before it happens. Second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lahu al-kitaba has written. And this is what Adam said to Musa. Allah has written what would happen before it happens. As is narrated in the authentic hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. أول ما خلق القلم The first thing created by Allah is the pen. And Allah said to the pen, اكتب. And the pen asked, what am I to write? And Allah said, what is from now until the day of judgment? حَتَّى قِيَامِ السَّعَةِ Everything is with and known with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third is al-mashi'ah. That Allah has willed for us certain things. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed for us, your will can never contradict it even if you desire something else. You may desire your will is to raise your children until they are old in age. And Allah's mashi'ah, His will for you is that you lose a child. Even if you love it, you cannot keep it. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah. It is beyond your capability to contradict the orders and that will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us want to have good health and good wealth. But that will is superseded by the instructions of Allah azza wa jal. Fourth and finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَهُ الْخَلْقِ وَالْأَمْرِ Allah for him is the creation. And Allah creates things that happen in our life that force our qadr. If I was to ask every single one of these brothers sitting in front of me here today, numbering the hundreds, I ask you, did you know when you were 10 years old you'd be living in Australia? If you have come from a distant place, maybe even just a few years ago. Uh, me, born and raised in Canada, if you told me at age 20, age 20, just 10, 15 years ago, Brother Yahya, you're going to live in, in Australia, you're going to live in Perth, you're going to work there, marry there, have children there. I said, you're crazy. How? It's impossible. But the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates things and opportunities to put you in a place that you have no control over being there. None of you could choose your parents or my parents. I couldn't choose my father and mother. I want you to think, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, there's an orphanage. Some of these celebrity superstars, it's now a moda, fashion. Madonna and these people, they walk into a poor country. Could be Mali, could be wherever. They walk into an orphanage and there's 300 children. All of them orphans. No money, nothing, qah. And this super celebrity, they point to one child, this one. 
and they change the life of that child in comparison to the rest there, qadr. Nothing could have changed. For, if, if you were to bring that person to the same orphanage, an hour later they would choose a different child. It is written. Do you really believe that these, you know, multi-super millionaires, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, the soccer player, right? Brothers all into soccer, football. You think Cristiano Ronaldo should be paid for one hour's work what I would live three lifetimes to be made in my three lifetimes? Cristiano Ronaldo, he wears a Nike t-shirt. Nike. He's not even in a game, just for a photo. On the shirt is the symbol of Nike. That's it. He gets paid six million dollars. Photo. Yahya Ibrahim makes hundred thousand a year. If I work for thirty years, three million dollars my whole life. I have to live and die and be born again and live and die to make six million dollars for a photo. Qadar. Qadar. Right? You say, but he's a superstar. He's an a- yes, he's an athlete. You think he made his own genetics? You think he, he created himself? Oh no, it's hard work. There's people who work harder for their money and get less. Qadr. وَرِزْقُكُمْ فِي السَّمَاءِ Your rizq is in the heavens. Decided for you before you are brought here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرزق. After Jum'ah, Allah says, إِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةِ You finish your prayer, go out into the earth, seek the rizq Allah has made. Allah has brought down this rizq, you have to get it. So you have to train like Ronaldo and kick like Ronaldo to be like Ronaldo. But what was written for him preceded his birth. That was his rizq written for him. Finally, the laws of Islam are built around a philosophy that accepts qadr. A thief who steals. The reason they steal, why it's haram, it's not just because they took something that belongs to me. Sometimes it might be good. Sometimes my phone is two years old and I have insurance for it, right? Someone steals it. I say, Jazakallah khair, I'm going to get a new phone. Nobody's upset. It's insured. Why is this haram, brother? Why is stealing still haram? Nobody's upset. I'm happy, he's happy. La. Why is stealing haram? Because the person who steals is not happy with his qadr. This is the reason. The person who takes riba, who takes interest on loans, is not happy with his qadr. You make a hundred thousand a year. Alhamdulillah. You can own a three bedroom home. Alhamdulillah. You can own a twenty thousand dollar car. Alhamdulillah. You want a forty thousand dollar car and a five bedroom home. You're not happy with the qadr. With what you can own. So what do you do? You go to the haram and ruin your life in the dunya and in the akhirah. The person who steals is taking his property but before it's time. Our philosophy, Kashri'ana, tells us that when I take something that's not mine, I'm taking what is mine but before it's time. If I take from you $100, Allah has given me $100 risk but I'm taking it in the wrong way before it was to come to me. And that's why stealing, impropriety, is a sinful behavior, even if you're not caught. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yatawa'ad authorizes and promises the one who commits such act with unhappiness in the dunya. Have you ever seen a poor person who's happier than a rich person? A poor person who is satisfied with Allah is much happier internally, even externally, than rich people who have to take drugs to sleep, who have to liquor themselves up from depression, who can't trust those around them who are always trying to take from them, right? The poet says, A person doesn't want to be poor, but poverty is better than arrogance that stems from wealth and power. To be happy internally is to know I have enough. Because if your soul is not satisfied, the money of the world will never be enough. 
be satisfied with Allah has given you, you will be a king. 